in the wild heart of Madhya Pradesh in Shivni. A real life inspiration for Radyar Kipling's Jungle Book, a landscape once known for its harmony with nature. But climate change and decades of chemical overuse on its land have disrupted that balance, hardening soils and bringing erratic rains. Forty-five years old Devinder Kumar Ulke, a small farmer in Dhobisara village, tills four acres of paddy field. मिट्टी क्या है कड़ी होने का कारण ये है ट्रैक्टरों से खेती किसानी करने लगे लोग और क्या है इसके पहले क्या है नागर का उपयोग करते थे अब नागरों का उपयोग बैल का उपयोग करना काफी बंद कर दिए हैं और खाद वाद भी डालना कम हो गई है पहले की अपेक्षा अब क्या है यूरिया डीएफी का उपयोग ज्यादा करने से क्या है उरक्षा शक्ति जमीन की कम हो गई है जिसके कारण कड़ापन आ गया है जमीन में कड़ापन होने से फसल की पैदावार कम हो रही है इसलिए किसान को काफी नुकसान का सामना करना पड़ता है This year in June, Devinder tried something new. He applied basalt rock in the form of dust on two acres of his land, leaving the other two acres untreated. The difference, he says, is striking. Fewer pests, healthier crops, and moisture that held even after the rains. ये इस जमीन की मिट्टी है और ये इस जमीन की मिट्टी है. जो इसमें नमी ज्यादा है और इस पर नमी कम है For farmers like Devinder, this feels like a turnaround. But this simple grey dust is more than a fertilizer substitute. It is part of a possible global climate solution being tested in Shivni's fields through a process called enhanced rock weathering or ERW. By spreading finely ground basalt dust over fields, ERW mimics nature's own carbon trapping cycle, locking away carbon dioxide while also helping soils breathe again. Devinder claims his two-acre experiment with basalt rock dust with basalt dust, or what they call mati purak, has brought clear results in the matter of months. Mati purak nahi dalne se ye bimari lag gayi baaki khetton mein. और जिसमें माटी पूरक डाला था तो उसमें मेरी फसल अच्छी है और एक सी फसल है माटी पूरक नहीं डालने से मेरे को काफी नुकसान पचास हजार का नुकसान हो गया The idea behind enhanced rock weathering is surprisingly simple. Climate scientist Kirsty Harrington breaks it down. Enhanced weathering is a natural process that's thought to regulate climate over geological time scales. Basically what happens is you've got CO2 in the atmosphere and that can dissolve into water. So that water could be rain, it could also be the soil pool water, and it forms a weak acid called carbonic acid. So it makes that water a little bit acidic. And when that acidic water hits rocks, it chemically dissolves them. So that dissolution process releases nutrients and it also releases a uh, an aqueous form of carbon called bicarbonate so those nutrients can either be taken up by plants or they could be released from the soils and enter the rivers and eventually wind up in the ocean so erw can lock away carbon dioxide for thousands of years in the race to meet climate targets that permanence makes it valuable All scientists are now saying that by 2050 a gigaton scale removal per year is possible on agricultural fields. India with its humid conditions, abundant sunshine and vast basalt reserves offers ideal conditions for ERW developments. And private companies today are racing to unlock this potential, turning it into tradable carbon credits. Devinder's two-acre experiment was carried out by Mati Carbon, one such company. The company claims that the deployment of over 200,000 tons of rock dust has already helped sequester 1,000 tons of carbon dioxide for their international clients. In 2021, I visited some farms in in central India in Chhattisgarh, and uh, I realized the climate adaptation need. 
एंड द अर्जेंसी ऑफ द क्लाइमेट एडेप्टेशन नीड तो जैसे कि तना छेदक की बीमारी लगती है आपके धान को तो वो क्यों होती है वो सिलिका के कारण होती है focused on small holder farms in the global south they now aim to work with 100 million farmers through a non-profit controlled business model i could see uh, enhanced crop weathering potentially solving for their adaptation need and at the same time being financed through the carbon finance i could see that we could scale this in uh, this decade and it was a gigaton uh, scalable pathway So how does one calculate how much carbon has been finally sequestered through an ERW intervention? By figuring out alkalinity in soil, water and gases, which basically means figuring out how much carbon dioxide is present in each state. A careful measuring and verification process should give you this number, which then gets translated into carbon credits. All these measurements go into our modeling system where uh the geochemical modeling and the system modeling is done for the export of uh, the alkalinity from the fields to the ocean and that model then is able to provide us a robust and sort of reliable way of quantifying the carbon which has been removed however scientists point out that it is still early days for ERW and uncertainties around quantification can abound for several reasons the uncertainties lie in how large the system is So if you think about enhanced weathering of the whole system you apply the rocks to the soils but those uh, dissolved products once the basalt dissolves have to make it from there through the soil system enter the rivers and eventually wind up into the ocean so that's quite a huge system to take into account Right the, the main uncertainty involves um what's referred to as monitoring reporting and verification mrv and, and quantification of carbon that you know you're applying these rock powders um weathering is very you know generally slow process even when you're enhancing it by increasing the surface area of the rock powders it's still a slow process um and there's a lot of background noise when you apply these rock powders to soil you have natural soil weathering and microbial processing it's in there's a lot of background noise that makes it difficult to detect um a weathering signal or how much CO2 is being removed moreover not every experiment with rock dust translates to farm fertility and that is because not every field responds the same way in water stressed regions of shivni like the padarwani village scanty rains have pushed groundwater levels to more than 500 feet even after the first round of rock dust farmers continue to struggle to hamare yahan kya sadhan nahi hai paniyon ka to isliye suka suki type ki zameen rehti hai jaisi barsaat gayi to pani khatam hai to churi dalne ke baad jo dust hai gitti ki usko dalne ke baad bhi bimari lagi aur dhan achhi nahi bani aas hamari bhai ye dekhi sthiti kya hai dhan ki धान में क्या सफेद वाली का प्रकोप लग रहा है साइंटिस्ट एक्सप्लेन द इनएविटेबिलिटी ऑफ सच केसेस बिकॉज़ नेचुरल सिस्टम्स कैन बी कॉम्प्लेक्स वेल आई थिंक इट इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन द नेचुरल सोइल कंडीशंस टू स्टार्ट विद एंड हाउ um weathering sort of flourishes so for example there might be certain microbes that benefit uh weathering and, and can help increase those reactions and they may not be present in certain fields it could also be the ph the initial ph of the fields they might be too basic and therefore that slows weathering down uh there could just be uh, less water than other fields so there's a lot of different conditions that can come into play to cause some fields to be a little bit slower to weather than others Beyond Shivni, other innovators are adapting enhanced rock weathering to very different landscapes in the misty hills of North Bengal's Darjeeling. Alt Carbon is trying to revive failing tea gardens, paddy, and bamboo plantations using basalt dust. I'm I'm a tea planter myself. We realized very early on that um to be able to get the Darjeeling tea industry out of its financial decline, it's important for us to improve the the per acre revenue on an average we see a 15 to 30% uh 
um, crop yield increase, which is massive. You have high monsoon in, in North Bengal, in Darjeeling, uh, which ensures that your rocks weather faster. We also deploy on rice paddies alongside tea gardens, which is also um, something that we started experimenting primarily because rice paddies surround the tea gardens. Old Carbon has deployed ERW on 20,000 acres across North Bengal and is earning carbon points to the tune of $270 per credit. However, the turnaround time for revenue generation from a carbon credit life cycle is lengthy, adds Shantanu of Marty Carbon. The revenue comes in like two to three years after the deployment has already been done because that's the kind of time it takes to really get enough data and consistency and then uh, uh, measure it all and quantify it and model it before you can actually certify it. Even as ERW trials expand at this point, they reveal both promise and complexity. At least for some farmers facing degraded soils and climate chaos, basalt dust offers tangible hope. Yes, we have to put this material in our house and in our family. All people are very happy with it. And our family is also very happy with it. And our family is very happy with it. Thanks for watching Eco India. If you like the story, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to scroll.in on YouTube.